Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy and finally we've reached a point where we're giving the anatomy prof. Probably you have your prof maybe tomorrow or maybe in a couple of days but you've got here and that's what matters and that's what I'd like to encourage you about that even coming here is a big milestone and I'm proud of all of you and I really hope inshallah you will nail your prof this time. So guys today I request all of you to bring up your books and we will start marking and revising the topics of upper limb and if you've got to this point where you need just a quick revision of upper limb congratulations you're doing quite well so when you first open your book you will encounter about nine in total chapters of upper limb i am not counting this chapter Overall, there are about nine chapters that you need to cover, which is not so bad. And today I won't be talking about the bones. I'll only be talking about the rest of the chapters. So let's get started with no further ado. In the introductory chapter, all you have to do is give it a read and get a little concept about your upper limb. So let's begin with the pectoral region first. All right. In the pectoral region, there is basic understanding of what lies in your pectoral region, what are the layers of the pectoral region, skin, then superficial fascia, what are the contents of the superficial fascia, and what cutaneous nerves lie in the superficial fascia. This diagram about the cutaneous nerves is very important. Knowing the vessels is very important in the pectoral region, and the platysma, a note on the platysma is very important. We all know that the platysma is this thin, broad sheet of subcutaneous muscle. Two functions of the platysma are that it allows for wrinkling of the skin and it also protects the external jugular vein. Let's talk about the breast. The breast is basically a mammary gland. You have to know a little bit about the situation of where it is located and you should know about the quadrants of the breast. The quadrants of the breast are basically the upper medial, lower medial, upper lateral and lower lateral. Important part about these quadrants is that you should know that the upper lateral quadrant is the most important and this is where most commonly your breast carcinoma uh, begins. Also of note is this axillary tail of Spence. You should know very well what this is. Axillary tail of Spence is an extension of the upper lateral quadrant into the axilla. All right. So this is one thing you should know. So extent of the base. Deep relations can be just read and that's enough. The structure of the breast is what is a basic structure of the breast. You should have a good overview knowledge about this. You can just read this. You should know that every gland consists of a parenchyma and a stroma. The parenchyma is mostly the functional part of the gland, which means in case of breast is producing milk. And the stroma is the structure or supporting framework of that gland. In the stroma, the suspensory ligament of Cooper is very important. You should know very well about this diagram. This diagram is very important as it talks about the retro mammary space and the suspensory ligament of Cooper, what exactly it is. So overall, you can see the breast has a parenchyma, which is formed of these lobes, which consists of the lactiferous ducts. Between these lobes is the stroma, which is supporting framework of the breast. And the supporting framework of the breast is basically divided into fibrous septa. These fibrous septa are known as a suspensory ligament of Cooper. The septa are basically orienting your breast to your chest wall, basically holding it together. And this space that is formed between the two, the chest wall and the breast is the retromammary space. It is essential to know the nerve supply of the breast, the lymphatic drainage of the breast, which is extremely important. In the lymphatic drainage of the breast, you will encounter the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes, which are the axillary lymph nodes. In the nodes, you need to remember the axillary lymph nodes are the chief lymph nodes of the breast. An anterior group of axillary lymph node is the, the most important group. Apart from the anterior group, there is the posterior, lateral and central apical groups of nodes. So you know that there are about one, two, three, four and five group of lymph nodes of axillary region. And of these axillary lymph nodes, the anterior group is most important. So these are one nodes. And then we have the internal mammary nodes. And then we have some lymph from the breast reaching the supraclavicular nodes, the posterior intercostal nodes, subdiaphragmatic and subperitoneal nodes. So overall, these are the other nodes. But the most important are the axillary lymph nodes. You should have a brief overview of how much percent of the lymph is going to be draining into the axillary node and how much percent into the internal mammary nodes and how much percent into the other nodes. So 75% lymph drains into the axillary nodes, 20% into internal mammary and 5% into posterior intercostal nodes. This is a very important point. Next we have 
the sub areolar plexus of sapi you should have an idea about this as well turning to the next page the development of the breast can be left and we will directly come to the clinicals of the breast in the clinical of the breast it's so important to know that upper outer quadrant which i mentioned already is the most important and how do you make incisions they are made mostly radially you should know about the basic symptoms of the breast cancer so whenever there is breast cancer this is the most important clinical of the breast you should know that there is going to be puckering of the skin and what causes the puckering of the skin the contraction of suspensory ligament causes puckering of the skin what is puckering of the skin basically retraction so if the breast is like that this is the breast suppose it a part will be folded inside next we have the retraction of nipple how is the retraction of nipple is caused infiltration of the lactiferous ducts the puri orange appearance which is very important why is it caused due to this reason you should know very well and this puri orange appearance is very important so put a star on that now you should know how where does the breast cancer spread so basically every cancer has different types of spreads in case of breast there is most importantly the lymphatic spread there is a venous spread there is the lymphatic spread which means through the lymph vessels through the, through the lymph nodes and there is a venous spread so through the lymphatic spread it's important you should know that it spreads to the liver through the lymphatic spread it spreads into the pelvis and through venous spread it goes into the vertebra and it can go to the brain you shouldn't just know the locations of how it's where it spreads you should also know through which routes it spreads all right and then there are other uh, clinicals you can read them which are better in your knm let's talk about the deep pectoral fascia now the deep pectoral fascia reading is enough for this muscles you should know this table from the klm book the muscles of the pectoral region are known as anterior axio appendicular muscles so if in your prof a question comes that write a note on anterior axio appendicular muscles do not be afraid because they're basically talking about the pectoral region muscles so you should know their nerve supply action and their origin insertion the bilaminar tendon of pectoralis major should be learned it is important so i'm just going to give that a tick the clavi pectoral fascia and the structures that will pierce the clavi pectoral fascia are very important and it's a very easy mark you should very well know the extent of clavi pectoral fascia this entire paragraph you should know along with the structures that pierce it and for that i made an abbreviation called call you should talk about the serratus anterior and its important nerve supply which is the long thoracic nerve it basically retracts the scapula and causes overhead abduction and in case of serratus anterior getting injured there is winging of scapula never forget that so moving on to the next chapter we have the axilla you should have a very good knowledge about the boundaries of axilla not don't forget mostly people just write down these boundaries they forget to write the boundaries of the apex but when the question is asked that write down the boundaries of the axilla you should tell about the apex as well it has its own boundaries apart from that you should have an idea about about this the clavi pectoral triangle the delto pectoral groove the infra clavicular fossa basically all of these are the same thing cephalic vein passes through it and there is there are boundaries should be known the contents of the axilla very important and very easy because obviously the axillary artery the axillary nerve the groups of axillary lymph nodes and you should read this the layout of axilla should be read very well you should have a very good idea of what is written here the axillary artery is so important because the relations of the first part the relations of the second part and the third part super important so do not skip this chapter axilla it has a lot of important information so relations of the first part you should know what is lying anterior posterior lateral medial you should know the relations of the second part and third part I've made this quite easy in my lectures. Uh what I do is for all of the relations if there is a shortcut for learning the relations of axillary artery for all of the relation in anterior you should all write and memorize the skin superficial fascia and the deep fascia and medially is the axillary vein. So two of your boundaries are made easy the rest of the boundaries you'll have to learn yourself otherwise mostly all the boundaries consists of the same anterior and the same medial boundary next the branches of the axillary artery and the 
you should know their names you should know where they are going so all of these paragraphs are very important you should know exactly what they are supplying where they are going what is their route so first part has one branch which is the superior thoracic artery the second part has the two branches the thoracoacromial and the lateral thoracic artery and the third part has three branches which are the anterior circumflex posterior circumflex and the subscapular artery and you should know what is uh, accompanying these arteries so in case of posterior circumflex humor it is accompanied by axillary nerve this is very important i'm going to point it out the subscapular artery is the largest branch of the axillary artery and that's important to know so we're done with the axillary artery axillary vein can be red you should know that it is the continuation of basilic vein apart from that axillary lymph nodes we've already studied you should know their locations in more depth and the clinicals which are what are the first nodes to be infected and that is the lateral group so in axillary lymph nodes first node that will encounter infection will be the lateral group klm should be referred for clinicals then they talk about the brachial plexus the brachial plexus i have a video on it i hope you go and check it out i have explained a simplified version of drawing and learning the brachial plexus so that's one thing you should know all of this is very important the branches of the brachial plexus and what is this special features are to be read because this is something people usually miss the m that is made the brachial plexus basically forms an m you the m of the brachial plexus you should have an idea of how this m ha is related to the axillary artery herbs paralysis and clump keys paralysis are the important clinicals in this case and that's done for axilla the back the chapter of the back this you should give a read a read is not more than enough for this part and uh, i have explained in my videos exactly what is going on here now we have the posterior axial appendicular muscles this is the table so you should know some basic pointers about each muscle the latissimus dorsi is the climber muscle or the swimmer muscle the trapezius is the shrugging muscle these are two important facts you should know every muscle has a specific feature you should know the triangle of auscultation and the lumbar angle triangle of petit next we have the scapular region now this is also a very important chapter after the axilla the scapular region they are going to talk about these muscles now what is important about these muscles is that in mcqs they will try to confuse you because supraspinatus infraspinatus but their nerve supply is suprascapular nerve so that gets a little confusing so i want you to very uh well learn this part because it can get confusing axillary nerve supplies the teres minor and the suprascapular nerve is supplying supraspinatus and infraspinatus you should know their actions in good depth and understanding you can just give this a read the clinicals of this part is very important you should know the regimental badge clinical this is the regimental badge this should be known very well that if axillary nerve is damaged you basically lose sensation over this lower part of the deltoid that is regimental badge and how when deltoid is paralyzed what happens so that's something you should know the dobarn sign is important painful arc syndrome this is written in your klm it's basically the subacromial bursitis apart from that intramuscular injections are given in the deltoid that's basic information you should know now this is a very important note and very easy marks rotator cuff muscles most commonly injured in the rotator cuff muscles is the supraspinatus tendon so rotator cuff you should have an idea on how to write a note on it a subacromial bursa similarly also you have you should have an idea of its function and you should be able to write a note on it intermuscular spaces are very important i've explained this on my channel i want you to go and watch that video and you'll understand everything about this in a very easy way i've explained everything and how you can learn these spaces in no time the axillary nerve is a very important nerve now this emerges from the brachial plexus from its posterior cord and it is the chief nerve supply of the deltoid muscle other muscle it supplies is teres minor so do not forget that anastomosis around scapula is double star so not only do i want you to memorize it but have a very good understanding of how it occurs i have encountered students making mistake that is when asked about the anastomosis around scapula they usually write down just the anastomosis around body of scapula what you need to know is anastomosis of the scapula is occurring around the body and is occurring around the acromion process so you have to mention both of them and in my uh, videos in my channel i have made simplified how to study this so go check that out so we're done with the scapular region so now let's do this chapter i just want 
you all to not panic on this chapter because this is mostly reading all right all you need to do is read some amount of concept you can take with you that's enough and even if you don't want to read the cutaneous nerves i just want you to memorize this diagram and another diagram about the dermatomes basically this one these two diagrams are very important so at least if you do not even have time you do not need to read all of it at least learn these diagrams from this chapter even that is enough but over here i want you to start reading and memorizing a little bit the dermatomes the definition of dermatome is very important another thing that's important in dermatome is the ventral axial line and the dorsal axial line uh, you should give these two a good read memorize them if you can and what is the pre axial border what is the post axial border here's an important point the overlapping of adjoining dermatomes so area of sensory loss is always less than the area of distribution that's an important point and you should know that pre axial and post axial borders are also important so dermatomes you can give it a good read thodi reading isme kar le and then veins in veins i just want you to know dorsal venous arch cephalic vein and basilic vein brief overview of these veins all right even just give them a read you should know that this vein is lying on the pre axial border now the pre axial border is the lateral side and cephalic vein is lying on the lateral side while basilic vein is lying on the medial side and basilic vein is what becomes the continuation as axillary vein an important clinical over here is it usually shows up in your mcqs is median cubital vein is used for intravenous injection and then we have the lymph nodes we've done most of your lymph nodes in the axillary in the chapter of axilla and the chapter of breast so here you can just give them a read lymphedema is important lymphangitis is inflammation of lymph vessels just the uh, thorough definition of these two things is also enough so i want you to read this one clinical anatomical problems at the end of the chapter i really want you to go ahead and look at this because this can come in your exam what lies deep to the vein the bicipital aponeurosis so brachial artery is protected basically that's what it's saying so remember that you get give this a read so till now you are very secure in your preparation and in the next video we will talk about the chapters after this point thank you so much for watching tune in to the next video